Right folks, how's it going? So, if you've been a subscriber or watcher of my videos for a while, you will know that I'm a huge fan of the ColecoVision. So, I bought myself something new today and uh, it's ColecoVision related. This thing is so huge, I'm struggling to get it into one shot. So, this is a Coleco Atom computer. Uh, it's based on ColecoVision hardware. These were released in 1983 and went out of production in 1985. They were hugely unsuccessful and are accredited to killing Coleco as a company. So I've owned my ColecoVision, my pal ColecoVision, for about eight years. And shortly after getting that ColecoVision, I learned about the Coleco Atom. So that is how long I have drooled over owning one of these. And tonight it came true. I now am the proud owner of this beast. So this is a standalone Atom. Uh, there's two versions. There's this version which is a standalone. And there's what's known as an expansion module. Which plugs into the expansion port on the ColecoVision. So this is a standalone, it has a built-in ColecoVision. If you can see, there's a cartridge port on it there. So these are a, a nice machine, they're extremely quirky. Um, if you know me at all, you'll know that's right up my street. So these take cassette tapes. Uh, they're known as digital data packs. They're a high-speed cassette uh, developed specifically for the atom uh, it's pretty much a standard cassette tape but uh, the plastic there's a couple of holes in the plastic and stuff which is different so you can't actually physically put this into a standard cassette deck and in turn you can't put a standard cassette into the Coleco drive without modifications apparently you can uh, drill a couple of holes if you can see there's a couple of holes here at the top of these which uh, fit on the two pins inside the the drive so a standard cassette doesn't have that and there's uh, differences down the bottom as well here I think there's a couple of holes missing where you know would stop it fitting into a standard cassette deck so you'll see when I uh, fire this thing up these are a high speed tape, so these whiz about forward and backwards really quick. And its standard read rate is a lot faster than a standard cassette tape. There's also a floppy disk drive available for these. Uh, I do have one here. This is not mine. This uh, was brought to me uh, by the guy who I bought this off. Uh, he has an atom as well and he wanted me to test this and make sure it was fully working. So I have the, the disc drive here. These are extremely rare. There's one of these on eBay at the minute. Uh, it's in worse condition than this, cosmetically. It's untested and it's $200. So that gives you a, a, an idea of just how rare these are. So I plug this in and it works perfectly. So I just need to... Uh, retro braid it for them and give it a service put fresh grease and stuff in it but it does work perfectly so maybe at some stage i'll get a disc drive for this thing um as of now i'm quite happy with just using standard cartridges and those high speed cassettes the power supply on these is actually inside the printer so you can't use one of these without the printer as you can see, if it wasn't for the printer, it would take up half as much uh, desk space here. So, yeah, the power switch is in the printer. So the printer plugs into the wall. Uh, and then everything else plugs into the printer. The on-off switch is on the back of the printer as well. So, not a great design. But, like I said, it's quirky. That's why I like it. The printer itself is a daisy wheel printer. And as you will hear in a minute, 
the thing sounds like a machine gun when it's in operation. <laughs> it's absolutely ridiculous how loud this thing is. And it's massive because the paper doesn't even feed out of the front of this thing. It goes in here, comes around the roller and comes back out the top. So why this thing is so massively huge is beyond me. It's just 80s technology for you. The spec on this is uh, it has the same video chip, the same sound chip as the ColecoVision. But it has 80k of RAM as standard and I think you can expand that up to 144. There is like an expansion, memory expansion that you can get the plugs into. Um, I'm not going to go into everything about this because the video will wind up being an hour long. It's just a general overview of it really. <clears throat> so these were most popular in America. Um, that's where they sold the most. They did get a European uh, release, I think, in France, possibly some other European country, but they didn't sell very many. These things were, when before these were released, Coleco said it was going to be, I think, $399. And when it actually came out, it was like $599. Uh, they really underpriced themselves. And... You know, people just couldn't afford it. It was too dear. Um, you could at the same time you could buy a Commodore sixty four for like a hundred and fifty dollars. So yeah, these things were really unsuccessful, and <clears throat> did have their flaws. One of those major flaws is, uh, even printed on a sticker here at the top of the on the top of the computer itself. Uh, the power supply in the printer, when you turn it on, can give a large uh, electromagnetic pulse, which has been known to wipe the tapes. If you put a tape inside and then turn it on, it can wipe the tape. So yeah, it was a huge design flaw by Coleco. And really, I don't think they knew about it until they sort of released the first run of these things. And then people started going, what the hell's happened to my game or tape that I have just purchased? Um, so the later versions have this important notice on top, which basically tells you not to turn it on when you have a cassette in the drive. So yeah, uh, EMP pulse out of this thing uh, can just basically wipe your whole your whole drive clean or your whole tape. So like I said, this is an American machine, and as such, it runs on 110 volts. So I have a bit of a spaghetti junction here. I have a, a UK to US plug adapter here going to a step down converter which is then going to a US uh, power strip with uh, surge protection so it has a built in trip and stuff in it so we'll fire this thing up here and I'll give you a look or a quick look at it in action so the power switch is hidden right down in the back of the printer here <laughs> so when you turn this thing on without any program via tape, cartridge or a floppy disk, it goes straight to uh, word processing, built, it has a built in word processor. So when you type, it automatically types it straight to the printer. I don't have a piece of paper in there. I'll go and get a piece of paper. Okay, so I've put a bit of paper in now. Um, as you can see, this just takes A4 paper. Uh, it's wide enough here, so I'm guessing it takes fan fold paper as well. I'm not 100% sure, but I know that it works with just standard A4 paper. Obviously, you then need to switch the paper out each time. 
after you've finished taping. So this will just give you a quick idea of how loud this friggin' printer is. I'm just going to tape a couple of lines here. So yeah, um, I'm not entirely sure how to use all this as well. Uh, there is different variations here. You can actually switch it to uh, word processing uh, or a different type of word processor where you would then type what you want. And then you could edit it and stuff. And then you hit print and it prints the whole page. So what I was showing you there is just like a basic sort of typewriter function if you will <laughs> I'm not sure how well that done justice to the noise from this thing but yeah it's friggin loud <laughs> so enough of this I'm going to go on and talk about some games and software here so firstly I'm going to load a game this is Super Donkey Kong um, on a high speed cassette or data pack if you will So once you've inserted your game, you then hit uh, this reset. There's two resets here. This one resets the computer and this one resets the ColecoVision part of it. So we'll reset that. And it automatically starts loading. It's actually rewinding at the minute. <coughs> So that loaded a lot quicker than you would expect from a cassette. Normally, you know, even loading a Spectrum game takes five minutes. These are super high speed cassettes. Still not as quick as cartridges, obviously, or even the floppy disk drive. Uh, it's almost instant through the floppy disk. But yeah, it's a lot quicker than loading a normal cassette. These high speed data packs would have been cheaper to buy than cartridges. I'm not sure uh, the comparison between these and an actual floppy disk, a game on floppy disk. I'm not sure of the pricing there. <coughs> so you'll have noticed there's no sound here. Um, I only have a composite output from this. There is a dedicated like a, a DIN plug which carries sound or RF or there's a standard standalone composite which I'm using here so I need to buy a cable for it a DIN plug cable which will output composite and sound I could use RF but my TV won't tune in the sound 
it's somewhat NTSC compatible. It will tune the picture in, but I'll just get white noise through the sound. So the major selling point of these games on the data packs rather than cartridge was that they could hold more data than the cartridge. So this version of Donkey Kong actually has all four screens, whereas the cartridge version for the ColecoVision only has three screens. It's missing the Pi Factory. So this one actually has all four screens from the arcade and it also has a, a slightly better graphics on the the intro screen or the menu screens here and it also has the how high can you get the sort of in between screens if you will I also have a Super Donkey Kong Jr which has an extra screen I think there's four screens on the cartridge version and five screens on the tape version if I remember right I think that's correct I also have a genuine uh, super game pack here it's uh, Buck Rogers and the Planet of Zoom this is also a cartridge game for the ColecoVision but this super version for the Atom is far far better than the cartridge version there's extra graphics, there's extra levels, there's extra sounds, there's more enemies. So yeah, because this has, the Atom has more RAM and these carry, you know, more, hold more data than a cartridge, they could obviously do a lot more with it. So if I now want to play a cartridge, a, a ClickVision cartridge, I just take any standard ClickVision game. I plug it into the cartridge, you can do this with the power on and then you hit this reset button so this reset button resets it to the Atom mode and this reset button resets it to the ColecoVision mode and with it being a cartridge it's instant loading So as you can see from this picture, uh, this thing is actually boxed and, <laughs> and the size of the box as you can see is ridiculous. I knew, I have read, you know people saying oh you won't believe the size of the box until you actually see it and that is so true. <sighs> Here's the box sitting at the side of my room. It's, uh, I don't know, it must be three and a half feet long. It's an absolute monster. And with the atom in it, these weigh an absolute ton. So the box could be in better condition. I've seen worse. Um, it is complete. Uh, there's a little bit of sun fading on it, as you might be able to see there. But it's complete. It has the polystyrene inserts. So I'm happy, I just need somewhere to friggin' store this monster of a box now. If you're familiar with the ColecoVision homebrew scene, um, there's a expansion called the Super Game Module which basically turns the ColecoVision into an MSX. It gives it a shitload more RAM, I think it's 128 megabytes, I can't really remember, but it actually adds an AY sound chip as well. So there's been loads of people developing games to go with the Super Game module, um, which are obviously more advanced games, better graphics, better sound. So I have actually pre-ordered a super game module for use with my ColecoVision. You can actually use them with the Atom as well. <clears throat> but they have been delayed. Um, I pre-ordered it about three months ago. 
and they've had problems with production. Um, this is actually the third run of the Super Game module, that you, which is due out. So I have mine pre-ordered, and when it arrives, no doubt I will make a video about it. So like I said, there's lots of people developing games for this Super Game module. And I have actually bought one. Um, I wanted to have a game here for when the Super Game module arrived. This is Gal Galaga, as you can see. And this is a pretty much a direct port of the MSX version of Galaga. And if you can see there, it says on it that the Super Game module is required to play this game. So if you put this into a standard ColecoVision, it will not work. But, it works on the Atom. So here's the game here, the cartridge. This is made by uh, Collector Vision, um, which is uh, Gamester81 is part of the Collector Vision group. So they've made quite a few games for the Collector Vision and they've made a few games for the Super Game module. Now, as far as I know, not every game for the Super Game module will work in the Atom. Uh, I'm guessing, you know, ones that are requiring the the AY chip, the sound chip, will not work. But, luckily, this one works, so I can play this. Uh, and I don't even have my Super Game module yet. So, as before, there's no sound here because I don't have the correct cable. I'm just using a composite video uh, signal here with no sound hookup at all so there you go I have uh, a nice version of Galaga that I can play on my Atom As you will have seen there, uh, there's actually a controller on the side of the keyboard here. It's actually plugged into the main, main memory unit here. There's two joystick ports. And it also has the expansion port on the side, so you can use the expansions for the ColecoVision in this too. So the actual controller is identical to a standard ColecoVision controller. It's just a different colour. And you can see the fonts on the keypad there are slightly different. But apart from that, they're pretty much identical. <clears throat> and it comes with this handy cradle here, which uh, actually snaps off. So the reason for the cradle there is so you can obviously have your controller handy for when you're playing games. But this actually snaps in and it's held firmly there, which actually works as a numeric keypad for the computer. So if you're doing maths or whatever, you can use this as your numeric keypad, which is pretty interesting. And again, uh, something a bit quirky. You would probably get tired of using that after a while, sort of like a membrane keyboard there. But again, it adds a numeric keypad to the keyboard. So that's about it. Um, just really an overview rather than a review. Um, I, I just got this today. So I don't know everything about the, uh, the Atom. Um, it's going to be a learning process. You can add a second data drive to this. This is like a blank, a blank and plate here. Um, so I plan on getting another one of them too. Um, you can buy a modem for these and there is actually some BBS sites still going uh, which are specifically for the Atom. So I may look into that at some stage, uh, trying to get this thing online for a laugh. But that's all in the future. For now, uh, I just really want to enjoy this thing. And like I said, I've been drooling over these for eight years, so... Now that I have one, it's just time to spend some quality time with it and get the note. I do have quite a lot of software for this as well. Um, one thing I forgot to mention is there's no basic uh, language built into these. It's just that uh, like word processing, typewriter, 
type thing that I showed you at the start. Uh, Basic actually comes on a cassette, which I do have here. It's called Smart Basic. And yeah, so if you want to do any programming on this thing, you basically you need to load Basic in first, load it in the memory, and then you can type your programs and save them to a blank disc or a blank cassette. I've also got this uh, smart logo. So it's like a, a another programming language. Apparently this is, you know, supposed to be easy to learn and it has like a complete, uh, you know, everything included in this. So you load this in and then you follow the manual. And I think it's sort of more like assembler than basic would be. So, but, you know, I don't know anything about programming. I can't even program in basic. So I'll probably load this up at some stage and have a play about with it as all the pages are falling out on me. But yeah, just something else for me to play with and get to know this machine a bit better. All right, guys. I hope you enjoyed watching. Uh, I certainly enjoyed making this video. It's a video I thought I would never make. I never thought I would own one of this, these things. Um, if you have any questions, please ask. I will do my best to answer them. And if you can add any info or give me any tips for these, please feel free to leave a comment below. Thanks for watching. Catch you in the next one. Bye for now.